the last model. In the quiet remnants of what was once a bustling metropolis, the small community of Haven clung to survival. A dense fog, born from the decay of the world, loomed over the crumbling buildings, shrouding the last stronghold of humanity in a perpetual twilight. It was a world where trust was scarce, and the greatest threat wasn't just the infected, but the invisible enemy within the ancient plague that had resurfaced after centuries. Eva, a young mathematician with a sharp mind and a quiet demeanor, had been the first to recognize the patterns. Her family had been among the few who survived the first wave, thanks to her father's obsession with old world knowledge. He had taught her everything he knew about numbers, probabilities, and the fragile balance of life. When the disease struck again, Ava found herself alone, her family taken by the very thing they had fought to understand. Haven's population had dwindled to barely 50 souls, each day a battle to avoid infection. The plague spread silently, its incubation period long enough for carriers to unwittingly infect others before the first signs of sickness appeared. By the time symptoms manifested fever, blackened veins, and eventually madness, it was too late. Ava knew that to save Haven, they needed more than just luck, they needed a plan. She set to work. Her only tools, a battered laptop powered by a solar generator, and a mind driven by the need to protect what little remained of her world. Days turned into nights as Ava poured over data, her fingers dancing across the keyboard, inputting every variable she could think of population density, infection rate, mortality rate, the average time between exposure and symptoms. She ran simulations, adjusting for every possible scenario. Quarantine zones, food distribution, contact tracing, each variable was a potential lifeline or a death sentence. Her first model predicted that, without intervention, Haven would fall within a month. It was a sobering realization. The disease spread faster than she had feared, slipping through the cracks of their makeshift defenses. The community had to act fast, or all would be lost. Eva called a meeting with the council a group of survivors who had taken on leadership roles out of necessity rather than choice. They gathered in the old library, now a shadow of its former self, where the smell of mold and dust clung to the rotting bookshelves. The council members looked at Ava with a mix of hope and desperation. We have to establish strict quarantine zones, Ava began, her voice steady despite the weight of her words. Anyone showing symptoms must be isolated immediately. We need to limit movement between zones and enforce strict hygiene protocols. And we need to cut off contact with outsiders, no matter how much we need supplies. Councilman Jonas, a former firefighter with a grizzled face and a deep frown, spoke up. But what if they have medicine? What if they can help us? Ava shook her head. The risk is too great. My models show that even a single infected person entering Haven could lead to an outbreak we can't control. We can't afford to take that chance. The room fell silent, the gravity of the situation sinking in. The council members exchanged worried glances, but none of them could argue with Eva's logic. They knew the numbers didn't lie. Days passed and Haven's new protocols were enforced with an iron will. The community became a patchwork of quarantine zones, each one isolated from the others. Ava's model predicted a slight improvement, a longer survival window, but it wasn't enough. The disease continued to spread, albeit at a slower pace. Then came the outsiders. They arrived at the gates one misty morning, their faces gaunt, their clothes tattered. They claimed to have medicine, a possible cure, but they wouldn't give it away freely. They wanted entry, food, and shelter in exchange. The council was divided. Some argued for mercy, others for caution. Eva remained silent until all eyes turned to her. What does your model say? Councilman Jonas asked. Eva hesitated. 
Her latest simulation had shown that allowing the outsiders in, even with strict quarantine, carried a 70% risk of triggering a new wave of infections. But she also knew that if they didn't find a cure soon, Haven's days were numbered. My model suggests we shouldn't let them in, she said quietly. But I can't account for everything. If their medicine works, it could save us. But if it doesn't, the decision weighed heavily on the council, but in the end, fear won out. The outsiders were turned away, left to wander the desolate world outside Haven's walls. Ava watched them go, a knot of guilt tightening in her chest. The days that followed were tense, but the infection rate in Haven began to stabilize. Ava's model had bought them time, time to find another way, time to hope that somewhere, Someone was working on a real cure. But Ava couldn't shake the feeling that they had made the wrong choice, that the future of Haven was still teetering on the edge of a knife. As she ran yet another simulation late one night, her eyes heavy with exhaustion, a realization struck her. Models could only predict so much. Numbers and probabilities were useful, but they couldn't capture the human element, the hope, the fear, the desperation, and they couldn't make the hard decisions. Ava closed her laptop, knowing that the real challenge wasn't in the calculations, but in the choices they would have to make again and again, as they fought to survive in a world where the past was gone and the future was uncertain. The last model was just the beginning, and as long as they were alive, there was still hope.